Welcome back to Melvin's Moves, everybody. So today I want to take a look at Ethereum Classic's overall macro structure. I do have a couple things that I do want to show you guys to keep in mind. So one being we're going to look at the percentage drawdown from the top to the bottom. Then what I came up with a possible Elliott wave. What I think is happening here and a couple more things so first thing i do want to keep in mind right here is let's take a look at the drawdown comparison so from the all-time high in 2017 to the bottom in 2018 we saw about a 93.28 percent correction from top to bottom and from the high that we did hit in 2021 to the bottom that we have right now in June of 2022 was actually about 92.89%. So nearly almost the same amount of drawdown from there. Now, what I do want to highlight with this as well, we just looked at the percentages now let's look at the amount of time that took so from 2017 high to 18 bottom that took about 50 bars on the weekly time frame which would equate to about 350 days now if we look where from our current all-time high to our low point right now is actually about 58 bars about 406 days so we've already in a time perspective have completed what we've seen previously if you want to look back at these prior times we've already have been way way longer than what they are so i do think that is one area where that could indicate to us that we are in a bottom now for elliott wave structure what i potentially can see happening or has happened here would be that we would be in a leading diagonal on like a macro time frame. So we're gonna switch over to the monthly real quick. So if you're unaware with what a leading diagonal for Elliott waves are, this is pretty much what it looks like right here. Now, one of the key things with leading diagonals in Elliott wave theory is that typically the rules for L8 waves say that you have one, two can't go below zero, three has to be longer than either one or five, and then wave four can't go past wave one. Now that actually does end up changing for leading diagonals. They don't always have to go below wave one, but they very well can. So if we're looking at this on a leading diagonal structure, so we would have one, then that would be two, then we have three, that'd be four, and then we'd still have a wave five. Now, what I also want to clarify for this is that if we are to say that we are in this, that means our wave five would get us up here, and then we'd probably have another decent sized drawdown bringing us somewhere in between the top of the leading diagonals, wave one, and the top of wave three. So somewhere, really, I'm gonna draw a box for you guys. Somewhere along here, once we do get a wave five for this, assuming that this is, in fact, a leading diagonal. Now, what can we also look at here is, now, one uh, another key like characteristic with leading diagonals are that you do have a wedge shape, which you can see right here. It actually does talk about it. Subdivision, the wave A typically is zigzag, characterized by wave one and four over wave one and four overlapping wave one and four. My apologies, I can't read, and also by the wedge shape but the overlap in between one and four is not a condition. It may or may not happen. And then the subdivisions can be either five, three, five, three, five, or three, 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 
Examples above are shown 530 the subdivisions and you have when it's a ABC correction or a one, two, three, four, five oh, uh, impulse waves. Now this might be hard to see. You can definitely see the um, wedge shape like this, but it's a lot easier to see it when you do put it online. You can clearly see that you have a wedge shape formating formation. Da, 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 da. Now you could be like, hey, uh, we didn't touch the bottom of the wedge. Da, da, da. But so what you can say for that is the way that I did end up drawing this is you have it from this bottom right on over here in 2016 and then you didn't hit it right here you hit it more right there but regardless what else do i want to show with this is basically when we do look back at last time at the bottom with the scholastic rsi on the weekly time frame i did go ahead and mark right here with the vertical lines where the bottoms were put in actually i may have messed up there you go so what are we going to be paying attention to right here is you can see <clears throat> that both times you actually have made bullish divergence within the scholastic rsi you can see back in november of 2018 we made a low on the scholastic rsi but when the bottom came in we actually were moving up showing bullish divergence now we can even see this looking back from december that we did come back up, but we are seeing that we made a higher low, even though the price went lower. Now, I did want to show that, and then the following thing that I did want to show as well is we can get rid of all that fun stuff. Is this. So, we do have a fib right here. We pretty much went and back tested this high to low from 18 high to or 17 high to 18 low. We did go to the 50 level, which the 50 level right here is at $12.38, and our low came in currently at $12.44, so we were right above it. Now, us going any lower, I do also want to mention, would be saying that we pretty much would be taking out um, this entire run. So what does that mean exactly? Or what is the point of it? So you would be saying you'd pretty much take out the, so from the bottom of 2018 to the top in 2021, you would be effectively making no difference if you bought in sometime around here in really uh 20 if you bought in in 2019 then like you're pretty much at the same price is what i'm getting at um and then if you're saying that we're gonna go even lower than that then you'd be effectively saying that we just take out the 2017 all-time high as well and then I also did forget to mention that for this being a leading diagonal, typically what happens in wave three as well, you do, if we do go to the characteristics, usually the largest and most powerful, although some research suggests blah, 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 is in wave five. News is positive, blah, 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 blah. Where is it? often extends to the 1618 which we didn't exactly get to the 1618 but wave 3 typically has the most like volume as it did just say um crowd will often join the new bullish trend wave 3 often extends ratio picks up steam takes top of wave 1 as soon as wave 1 exceeded the stops are taken out depending on the number of stops gap left open indication wave 3 progress after taking out the stops wave 3 rallies 
has caught the attention of traders. Corrections are short lived, as you can see, and they are shallow, as you can see right here. They're all pretty shallow relative to all the corrections that we do have. Now we would be in a wave four. What would wave four? So more buying sets in. Wave four, typically corrective. Prices meander sideways. Retraces less than 38.2% of wave three. Volume is well below that of wave three. Now 38.2% like we we're talking about. So typically in Elliott waves, if you, we do scroll back up to here, wave four, but no more than 50%. And wave four typically does not go past the top of wave one. But that is not what we are looking at. What we are looking at is saying that, hey, we are in a leading diagonal on like a macro structure, which as we did read earlier, that wave four, wave one and four, it is characterized by overlapping and wedge shape, which we already covered that. And like I was just saying, volume is well below that of what wave three is being. So overall, what I'm gaining from looking at this is, in my opinion, I think we do have another move, major move towards the upside. I don't think we are going lower than where we are or like where we put a bottom in right now, which was at again, $12.44. Um, I do think ETC will moon and catch a lot of people by surprise. And even if, well, actually another thing I do want to look at quickly or not quickly, but do take note of is that for Ethereum classic, you do have a max supply or total supply of 210.7 tokens in total we don't have that circulating we only have about 65 percent of the total supply right now but with that being said what would the market cap be for let's say if we did um where is it even if we get to this 1618 right here so let's take a look so i went ahead and did the math already for you guys but what I also did want to show you, we are on the market cap. The all time high for the market cap was actually, if we, well, firstly, you can see right here was about 15.6 billion. If we zoom out, you can see that was the all time high for the market cap. And next thing I do want to note is again, max supply is 210 million. Current circulating plot supply is about 136 million. Now, if we do go back here, I did go ahead and do the math. If we were to look back at the fib we just had, even if we were to just say get to this two, 1618 right here at $253, with the max supply, that would put us at a 53 billion market cap. With the circulating supply, that would put us at a 34 billion market cap. That being said, what is the meaning of this? We don't have that large of like a the supply isn't as big as many others, but more importantly, what you can see here is either way, 53 and 34 billion is a very obtainable number, especially when it comes to crypto, because we can like if you even were to say compare with other ranking coins such as the infamous dogecoin let's see what dogecoin is or what its all-time high was because you did see that it did end up um well all right well you'll see you'll see in a second It's all time high in market cap was 88 billion. So they had uh, Dogecoin has a substantial higher market cap, but 
just as an example, if you have a meme dog coin like this, that has a substantially higher market cap when you have Ethereum Classic to compare with, Ethereum Classic definitely has a lot more room to grow considering too that you have, what, 132 billion? So, oh, how interesting. 132 billion in current supply. And if we do go back, what is Ethereum Classics? Actually, you know what? We have it right here. So your leaving supply is 136 billion. So if you want to put that into perspective, there you go. But anyway, that is going to wrap up the video. I did just want to point out a couple of things with just looking back at the previous market structure and all that just a couple of things for etc i do think that we have bottomed on the etc but of course i very well can be wrong so i always encourage you guys to do your own research formulate your own opinions and 